Thanks for listening to the Catch a Pocket Podcast. I'm your host, Lori Burris. Really glad to have you guys. Nice to talk to my friends. Uh, I miss you guys. Um, I've been kind of socially distant. And I usually am socially distant anyway. So I, I'm not really noticing too much of a difference. But just a little like being able to go to a restaurant with my friends once in a while or go up to my favorite bars Kirby's and Lucky's and have a beer once in a while and I miss all of that there's lots of great places you can donate to people out there in need there's lots of people in need um if you need anything from me please reach out to the Catch Pocket Podcast and I'll be happy to try to at least give you a lending ear or something because man I have a job I've been working from my table in my house for some days now and although it is wonderful to be home and to be with my son and to be safe and have a job um, it's also kind of weird and different and and anyways I miss everyone and I can't wait until we figure out how to cope with this problem it seems like everyone has a different idea every single day anyway episode 23 is colin allen he is an artist here in wichita wonderful guy making some really cool products i'll put the links to all his things all his sites instagram facebook i'll let you know about the go create program at wsu these are all closed right now i think they open in phase three i think phase three is going to be in june this is all i got babes thanks for listening and here's colin allen Okay, so my next guest on the Catch Pocket Podcast is Mr. Colin Allen. He's an artist, and we're going to talk a little bit about him and the, what he's doing now and what he's done in the past and future to come. So, how are you today, Colin? I'm doing okay. I'm, I'm excited. You know, yeah. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I really appreciate you coming. Um, so, usually on the podcast, I talk about where you were born mm-hmm. first, and we kind of go from there, and you yeah. take us wherever. I was born here in Wichita. Um, mm-hmm. I've, I've lived here most of my life. I've kind of, I traveled a little bit when I was younger. Right. Um, but, you know, Wichita is a, a good town. It's a great town to make art. Um, yeah. We have every resource and and I know all the salvage yards. Right. So. You know what you're looking for. Yeah. And your media is kind of that recovery type uh, changing something, refurbishing, and that kind of thing? Pretty much um, everything that I do has some kind of base in um, salvage materials. Okay. And so I try to, I spend a lot of time finding and trying to figure out how to utilize those materials in some way. Right. And so you were born here in Wichita. Does your family still live in Wichita? Or? Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, just my mom and my dad. Mm-hmm. Obviously, my sister lives in Chicago. Right, and that's Megan, who's yeah. a friend of mine, too. And I went and visited um, in Chicago. And they were the best ambassadors of Chicago. So if you ever get a chance to just follow them around for a day, it's pretty exciting and fun. So um, so you grew up with how many siblings, then? Um, I've got um, two sisters and a brother and me. Yeah. Yeah. So a pretty big family, and um, and all the kids are elsewhere, but you, right? Um, I my little sister still lives in Wichita Ivy. Okay, yeah. cool. She, she's down by East High, someplace. 
Okay. That's a good neighborhood. Are you there too in that area? Um, we're kind of just east of Crown Heights. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We lived in a country overlook, which is right next to, uh, which is Terrace if you're on Central, but to the north part of Central yeah. instead of the south. Yeah. So not College Hill, but uh, Country Outlook is yeah. what it was called. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, College Hill and Crown Heights, all those neighborhoods right there are just really wonderful yeah they really are uh, diverse culturally diverse uh, open-minded and progressive yeah. i think yeah they're awesome i wish i mean i used to live right around there and i always wished um i didn't want to move when we came out here but but now that i'm out here it's nice and quiet i don't mind so much yeah yeah, yeah. it's that's... not really too far so. no no it's not bad and and you know it's nice we we where we live um it's really a quiet neighborhood, and mm-hmm. it gives me the ability to kind of have room to spread out, and nobody right. yells at me for welding in the driveway. Or <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you went to East High, or um, actually, I went to multiple high schools in Wichita. I was a horrible student. You were, um, <laughs> you're yeah. a bad guy. Well, I'm I'm dyslexic, and so I struggled with learning disabilities right. on, of huge amounts um, yeah and I ended up dropping out of high school I got my GED okay. I ended up getting a high school diploma and then I kind of went to work uh-huh. um and actually the day I moved into a tent and lived in a tent for about a year and a half here in um, Wichita no we traveled around yeah. out in the country um we wow. lived I lived next to a cave for like nine months wow um, did guided tours in it and worked on some <laughs> like cool. archaeological digs yeah um and then we moved back to the city, and I worked in restaurants and things like that. Sure. Um, and then eventually I went to welding school. Okay. Um, so that was during probably your after 18, but before yeah. 25 or something yeah. like that? Okay. And then you went to school at, as an older adult? Yeah. Actually, I just graduated with a BFA in studio arts for painting. Um, at I, WSU? Yeah. I just, okay. I went back. I actually have an associate in welding mm-hmm. science um, from Wichita Area Tech okay. um, or WSU Tech now. Right. Um, and so I have certifications in CATIA, cool. um, 3D design. Do you do like that, that for a living sometimes? or? I mean, I do help people with designing almost anything they want right um i mean if they need 3d models i can do that if they need to figure out production ways to produce something right i can do that and I, are you doing that at that go create i am I've, I've actually been working at go create for working out of go create right. for three years almost and what do you think of that um you know it's an amazing facility yeah um we i've been really fortunate to to be able to take advantage of that that facility i mean to its fullest. Yeah. Um, I, I'm one of the only people who's certified in all the areas because um, we have a textile area. We have a tech area. Um, yeah. We have a welding shop, a metal shop, a wood shop. Um, and yeah. I and I use them all almost daily. Right. Um, That's cool. Yeah. It, I've been real fortunate. Yeah. Yeah. So you know how to use them. So do they ever use you as someone who can help someone else that hasn't used the thing yeah they they do um i mean i'm i'm always there kind of working and so Mm -hmm. when people have questions um i mean we have mentors there that Mm -hmm. work in each of the areas uh i look at things a little differently and so sometimes you know i'll help people that are trying to figure out how to make something or just need a little bit of nudge right inspiration yeah to get them them excited yeah and uh, knowledge about something that so they don't have to work something over and over again yeah and okay and and it's i mean you know one of the great things about go create is that it gives you time to play on equipment right and and when i say play not actual play but but to try and see what you can do and and if it messes up you know you can start over and that's one thing that a lot of people don't have um access for i mean right. you know you can't to buy welders right you know it, it's thousands of dollars and you can yeah a lot of people can't afford one so they would never have any access to one but this yeah. is giving people access to that absolutely yeah and, that that's cool that's what i think about that i haven't been there oh. but i hear such good things about it it's like people rant and rave once they do a project there yeah they're like wow man you like you have everything there. and You do. You I know? mean, if you need 3D models, I mean, we can print 3D. We have like 10 
3D printers. That's amazing. We have wide format printers. You can do. I actually, my last show um, uh-huh. was called Art Bomb, um, and I, saw I, and about I it. just yeah. did it. You know, a month and a half ago. Yeah. And ninety percent of the work that I did was actually made at Go Create. Oh, okay. And so, it it really gave me the time to to see kind of how far I could push some of these materials because since I use recycled materials, right. Sometimes you have to bring in industrial processes that you just don't have access to in your shops. Right. I mean, or at least I And don't. that allows you to do that? Yeah, That it place? It really does. Kind of ups your level of, of what you can do? It does, and it, and it allows you the time to kind of like to create a really finished product. Mm-hmm. Um, and like there's mentors there, so maybe if you're having stumped on something or you keep burning something or or whatever you can ask someone there absolutely they they've been really good about you know if you if you kind of get stuck in a spot i'm fortunate that i've every job i've taken and and done um has been um to kind of learn a skill um i've i've worked in all kinds of different industries right and and it was all to kind of learn how to do something so i went to welding school to learn how to build sculptures <laughs> and actually build in the correct structure so that they could take the wind load so that they could take all kinds of different forces that right. a lot of people don't know about right you know you have you yeah have to because those it'll just break yeah. and, and then you'll be uh you know you'll have to be out there again fixing it Absolutely. because they paid you a lot of money to do it yeah. more likely and, and so yeah or it, somebody could get hurt oh well, absolutely you know? and so you you have to so i've spent some time to think really, about those processes yeah and and so and i did like trim carpentry when i was younger right. and so I, you're really good at math then i'm not um, really i'm horrible at math but i understand how to f- plug in formulas or something like that no um I build things. You it, it, understand engineering by looking at it. Yeah, I mean, I, I have okay. I have a good um, spatial abilities. I uh-huh. guess is a good way to put it. That's me too. I I, yeah. I think so too. It's, it's like it, I see if I see it wrong, I can see it wrong. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. and and I understand how parts will fit together mm-hmm. without having to draw it out. And so a lot of times, like my sculptures will start just with like a piece of metal, mm-hmm. and then I'll start bending it and I'll cut and I'll bend and I'll Mm -hmm. do all these things to make it how it needs to be. Um, There's, there's kind of a way of like, just because it's not square doesn't Mm -hmm. mean that it's not pleasing to the eye. Sometimes the things that are perfect aren't, are boring or something like that. It's not that they're boring, but like there's, there's something about how it will not be pleasing to the eye or it won't, feel correct okay and and when you kind of put parts together you know that this feels good and that right. this is how it should work okay and um, it fits well in this kind of thing yeah and, and it, it's kind of a feeling where then a then a you're not calculating the curve of the angle or something well, like that and if somebody needs to i mean i can do that i can build right. very precise um models 3d models sure yeah and 3D, things like that yeah. i am horrible with math but somehow I'm able to understand how those pieces fit together. Yeah. Um, That's cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe you're not horrible, Matt. You just never had the right teacher. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, it, and it, it stresses people out to see me do stuff sometimes, but, but it always comes together. Yeah. And I'm real fortunate that I've, I've been able to do that. Um, right. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. So you had a show you were just talking about having a show just recently um so your work is that was that at the go away garage no um that wasn't it was actually at there's a building on douglas Mm -hmm. um that was just east of east high school okay um that somebody loaned me for about two months um they were real nice it was an eight thousand square foot building Mm -hmm. and then there was another three thousand square feet next door um and we ended up taking I took over the 8,000 square foot space, and mm-hmm. then another artist from Lawrence, uh, Jeffrey Benzing, mm-hmm. um, we did a show for him over in the smaller space. Okay, and, and that so, was the last final Friday or the one before that? That would have been the December first Friday. For, oh, it's first Friday now. First Sorry. Friday now. Sorry, guys. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm catching up. <laughs> it, it happens. It was, it, it was. It's all, it's the whole month, but the first Friday's the show, yeah. exhibition style. Well, mine only ran for eight days. Um, okay. Because it was... 
it was a lot of work and and december's a hard month because you have holidays and mm-hmm. things like that sure. so you can't you always. can't have final friday on december yeah because it'll be nobody will show up because they're all out of town and yeah and exactly whatnot. spent all their money already and well and, yeah. and, it, and it's a hard month i mean you know um this was a show that was about three years worth of work that i'd been building and saving up right um, that i hadn't really told anybody how much work i actually had built up oh, okay um, yeah it was, you said eight thousand square foot did you feel it i did and wow. then some actually we didn't we ran out of room i had to build some walls wow um, i had to hang stuff from the ceiling cool it, it got a little out of control <laughs> i'm really sorry to miss that i hope you have another one soon yeah i don't i'm I, oh i won't have another one that big yeah that one was it, it was a huge space yeah and, and i was real fortunate a lot of my paintings are 60 by 60 okay or, pretty large yeah pretty large yeah and and so it and most of the, like my new prints are yeah. all on like salvaged mylar uh blueprints oh so okay. they're slightly opaque and i'm printing them with like that's a, cool yeah they're, they're really neat you can actually see through them and uh-huh. so I, it was actually on the warehouse was brick walls uh-huh. and so i was able to attach them to the walls and then you could see the bricks behind wow. them which is really nice that sounds um, cool yeah I, I, I try and have fun with the materials yeah. you know it's yeah so 60 by 60 i want i want to see one of these things like yeah. hanging up do you have one at your house hanging up i do i have well at one point all of these pieces that yeah. filled this 8000 square foot building were hanging in my house in some place wow um, where do you keep where do you keep your art um, right now, I'm storing it in another an facility. Well, no, I have an art storage room in my house. I'm oh, real okay. fortunate. I have a, two studios in my house, and then I have a, a storage room. Oh, you got a lot of room to kind of sprawl out a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Well, yeah, I try and get things out of my studio so uh-huh. I don't keep working on them. Um, uh-huh. Once I get to a certain <laughs> point, I, I move to, them out. You have to get them out. Yeah. That's the same as a podcast. Yeah. You really have to, at some point, you have to say, it's done. I can't do anything else. Yeah. And everything I do from here on is hurting it actually yeah probably yeah. well and, and there's a point where you just have to realize that and it's just kind of you want to move on too you want to go on to your next you've got ideas coming in your head yeah. probably as you're doing one thing you've got ideas for other things that you're trying to keep track of oh yeah well and i work on multiples um at the same time oh, okay I, I did i just did a a large piece called it's called the 12 caesars mm. and it was i think i saw it on your website yeah oh what's your website by the way um it's alanworksart.com okay um, and you're also on facebook and twitter yeah it's all under alan works you can find me um on instagram um that's where i post most of my stuff yeah um so you can kind of see what you're working on and and then get an idea do yeah. you have people ever contact you and say i'm looking for something like this or oh yeah yeah i can mean I come see this i'm or? real fortunate that you know people see stuff and and just actually well the last two days i've been working on commissions that were being sent to new york oh cool for an artist um nice so you know I'm, I'm real fortunate that i get to do a lot of different things yeah. and hopefully you know um make money as you're doing it too yeah, some days yeah i mean hopefully more yep. you know i mean now that i'm not in school i have a lot more time and yeah um, ready to make some money and do some different things yeah. and such yeah yeah i got gotcha. you um so what are you working on for the future um right now i'm working on um, those those pieces going to new york or well no i finished those and, and got those sent off okay um I'm, right now, I'm working on a new line of backpacks and like, okay. bags, um, like wearable, yeah, creations. The, yeah, I actually took my Twelve Caesars series and I made new edits of all of them, mm-hmm. and now we're creating vinyl, um, like banner uh-huh. uh, backpacks out of them. Oh, cool! Yeah, that'll be cool. I'd like to see those. Yeah. Do you have one with you? Oh, cool. Let's see what you got. I'm going to explain it to the audience. Oh, this is really cool. It's kind of like a waterproof roll-up bag with uh, this. What are these things? Oh, it's Caesar. It's Caesar. Oh, it really is Caesar. Mm-hmm. I love it. Yeah. It's it's about two feet wide and, you know, long. You could fit a lot of things or, or a few things in there and be okay. Yeah, it, I kind of made it as like a shop bag for myself. Because right. Because I'm always having to carry a lot of stuff into right. my studios. And so... 
and when I go out salvaging, it's nice to have a bag that kind of expands. Oh, this and is amazing. So, um, I yeah. love it. Yeah, they're fun. They're, so how much do you sell one of the... Is this one of the big ones? Do you make smaller ones and bigger ones? Yeah, or? we're making some smaller tote bags okay. and things like that. Because you could roll up that and, and really you could literally... It could be a backpack for oh. a camping backpack. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and, and what's nice is it's super light. It's super waterproof. But, yeah. But, you know, it's right now I'm actually just testing different ways to make them mm -hmm. to... You know, a lot Are you of making it, these at the Grow Create place? I am. Okay. I am. Yeah, I'm actually printing the material there, and then I'm sewing them together. We have industrial sewing machines. Awesome. Um, so, so you can see pictures of this on this on the, this uh, podcast, but I'll also put links to your page. Yeah. And wherever you want, but you can also probably go down to Go Create and see you make some. Sometime. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 These will these are up on Instagram right now. Okay. And so and and I started it. It was. And on the back, it has regular backpack uh, straps. No, the back, the sh I'm sorry, the straps are made out of salvaged uh, felt. Okay, on the inside, so mm -hmm. it's not doesn't cut into you or anything. Yeah. And yeah, they look really good. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm real, really pleased about that. I bet it looks almost like uh, the green. I mean, you do you have other colors and things like that? I do. I mean, there's. I like that one though. I like I, the green. I think I've done about. A 130 different edits of my 12 Caesars. Okay. And so right now I'm working through which ones work the best for each style of bag. Right. And how they'll how they fit together because when you right. sew them you lose right certain parts exactly and... like you have the face kind of on profile there. Um, you had to plan that. You couldn't just go okay I'm gonna print this out and just cut these into slices because then you would have slice of nothing and <laughs> slice you, of... you'd be surprised i actually do that really um, yeah it it works out though because I, of the yeah. way the bag is shaped or something well it, or how you plan it it's kind of like my wallets are very are made up of different parts and pieces of oh those are cool is that the same kind of material uh -huh. is that mylar is that what it, you this said? is actually vinyl. vinyl this is like okay. a, a banner material and so oh, like what they make cool. billboards out of and things like that and okay. so it's a lot of it is me piecing things together so mm -hmm. that maybe you get a small bit of this one uh -huh. but what it makes it makes each backpack unique right you know and i so gotcha it i have this thing about making things that are no one else has one nobody else has like one. you don't want everyone coming in looking all the same yeah exactly you know? i mean you could you could put 10 of my bags or 10 of anything to, next to each right. other and, and you'll know it's your bag from the colors or or the styling but yeah. you won't know I mean, it won't look exactly like the next one. Absolutely. All right. right. Yeah. It's, that's cool. Well, it's, I think that's important for is. a lot of people not to be, you know, um, you know everybody the same. I like think that, that the things that I make genuine. and sell should be as unique as the people right. that are buying them. And sure. so that sometimes is kind of an issue. With I've, I've always made jewelry. Um, I've been making jewelry since I was like 16. Really? Selling it. Yeah. Um, like what kind of jewelry? All kinds of different just stuff. any kind beads yeah. and beads, metal work. And... Oh wow! Um, this is my necklace is one of my reliquary line. Okay, um, and it's and like it's, on a leather and. Well, it, it's actually waxed linen and uh, salvaged oh. bits and pieces, and so like there's a piece of copper on here that came from the Crown Uptown. So oh, that's about a hundred so... years old. It was part of their main electrical system. Wow, um, <laughs> that's cool. Know. Well, I try I try to build. It means something, in. right? Yeah, there's I have this thing about how Wichita it's all the things that I saw when I was a little kid walking around mm -hmm. and and taking those and trying to build connections into each piece and so right. each one of my necklaces is a hundred percent unique and that is somebody's own personal piece right forever so that's how you explain it or how Basically, you find your customer because that means something to them. Yeah. And you found this thing that could mean something. It means something to you, but it could mean something to other people Absolutely. as well. Well, and, and, you know, and that's the thing is that, you know, like, that's one reason why I use salvage materials is because they they have this connection that sometimes people will never see. And, and right. sometimes I don't explain. Right. But it has this connection through people and through things that happen. Right. And like the blue, my, all the prints from my last show were done on the Mylar. And those were made on okay. blueprints that some man had to work over 
right. you know, for years and years. And you can see oils and you can see dirt and you can see all these things wow. that change the prints. Right. But each one is unique. Right. And, you know, and was part of somebody's life. And right. that is and do you know where those blueprints came from? I like, do. I try not to say because they're okay. pro- pro- they're proprietary and technically I am not supposed to have them. They were supposed okay. to be destroyed. <laughs> okay. We won't say that. Yeah. But, okay, but but, uh, but you know. Yeah, I okay. know. And and I'll, I'll tell people, but right. but like I wasn't supposed to have them. Right. Um, okay. Somebody, a salvager, somebody who was cleaning out a building, called me and was like, "Do you want these?" Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I took as many as I could. Right. And, you know, and, and that's the great thing. I'm real fortunate that I have a lot of people who... Looking out for you. They do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I have people calling me. Do you have anybody you want to give a shout out to right now? Go Create has given me the ability. Um, and, and, you know, I've had a lot of people who've been supporting me and helping me kind of move forward over the last few years. Um, right. I do a lot of work with like Bob Burdett. Um, okay. And Robert Bupp, who is a professor at WSU, has like really stood up and helped me over the years cool getting through school um, yeah that's nice and so you know most of the other people and the salvagers they're yeah there's just people looking out for you because they, they know you like it yeah and then just kind of stranger and like passing ships yeah well yeah. and and they're very you know i'm real fortunate that i get a lot of unusual calls that uh, Sometimes randomly I'll come outside of my house and I'll find chunks of roofs because they had something interesting on them. Or uh-huh. somebody will just leave right. weird things for me thinking that I might want them. And sometimes I do. And, and sometimes, sometimes you like, don't, probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's, that leads me to kind of um, like minimalism and that kind of intentionality kind of deal. You're re, um, like storing things or uncovering things or just basically preserving things and making them better or different um to not put so much junk in in the world or to to lessen the load well i i just i hate to waste things yeah um you know there's so many things that you you see that can be reused and can be made into something else and like you know, repurpose type deal. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and truthfully, you know, it started out when I was younger because I was real poor when, when, you know, after 18. Right. And I couldn't. When afford. you were, when you were camping. Yeah. Or, yeah. And, you know. And it wasn't, I didn't have a lot of money to buy any kind of materials. And so things that I found, I was able to turn into other things. That and you I, needed. Yeah. And, right. and it was, you know, I'd make things and sell them to make money. Right. And. Same thing with jewelry. I'd find chunks of leather out of a bag or something, and I would sure. turn them into bracelets. Right, and, and then sell them for a little bit yeah. and make some scratch on that. Yeah, and, it, and so, but but it was something that really instilled that I needed to try and use things as fully as I possibly can. Right, um, I agree. My backpack, I actually, when I make those, I only waste a, a six-inch long by two inch wide piece of material right and that's it which okay. is is a very small right amount. and you could actually if you keep them all maybe make something else who well, knows and I, <laughs> and I do keep them all i, I turn them into wallets and oh things you like do that. Yeah, yeah absolutely okay um because see I, you're using it all then really if you think about it yeah i mean Just, sometimes it takes me a while to get to that stuff, right but but yeah i mean i really try and use everything i can um because it's just it, it works it's the right there. thing to do it is it really is and we just waste so much and just pollute so much in this environment so yeah i think that's a big problem and and we can all work on it a little but sounds like you're doing your part that's right and um so is there any um do you want to tell a story of inspiration um i mean i can yeah um, do you have one well you know it's funny. I, I'm not inspired by any one particular thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I really am inspired by all the amazing artists that we have in Wichita and all the things that happen. Um, you know, we, we live in really such a wonderful community for the arts. I agree. Or for artists. I don't feel like everybody's supported in the best ways always. Right. Um, I'm kind of vocal in the art community. Um, and... And sometimes I catch a bad rap for that. Um, mm. But, 
you know, we have so many amazing artists in Wichita that work so hard and that are trying every day to to move forward, you know. For sure. And and it, you know, you I know, I don't even know how many artists I know in Wichita. I mean, I, I started out at the Go Away Garage mm-hmm. 16, 17 years ago. Okay. Um, and through there I've met. And, and they're artists. nice people, you know. Oh, Everyone yeah. seems nurturing of one another and and they you are. know what i mean to to what you can to mo- for the most part you know yeah. there, there's still some issues you know the city i would love to see the city step up and support you know artists a little bit better right um, and and it'd be nice if some art groups were more vocal or well we're more inclusive maybe. oh okay um you know they're shut off a little bit they are you know it, mm-hmm. it's i see young artists struggling to kind of get into yeah that's hard and uh, but you know it's it's that effort that they're putting in that mm-hmm. really is inspiring i mean people are really trying to do amazing things i think so and, too and um and like lately i've been trying to get more artists to come to go create because mm-hmm. i know there's more that i can get help them right achieve. and that um, will help them go further in their art and one open door you yeah, know like absolutely. one success will open all the doors of the communities that have them well and you know and closed unions yeah. and stuff and it's all one step you know you yeah. take one step forward take another step yeah. take another step and all of that slowly builds on it i and, think so too um, it we're we really are a fortunate community yeah we are i think so too i think we should get out more and spend a little more money on events you know whether that be a play or whether that be an album or whether it's a sticker you know just kind of being there showing your support for our community is really important it is and and you know we have so many locals that are making things and selling them in great stores um right it it's building and and you know and it's there's always been a great community of artists Mm -hmm. but right now you're really seeing some people really shining and really going for it right Right. and and that's a great thing to see it is it's inspiring you're right well i really pleased that you came and i'm it's really a pleasure to meet you i'm glad to see what you're doing and and i'll post all of your sites on the on the notes for this this podcast wonderful and we'll i'm also putting it on youtube on the side so yeah it's really nice to meet you yeah i hope the best for your future thanks for catching a pocket with me thanks for inviting me Okay, that was Colin Allen, and I have put all his links to the notes on this show, so just kind of look through the notes, and you can just click on those things and see what kind of art he's producing, those cool bags that we talked about. I do apologize about my dogs barking in the background. I don't know what happened there. I usually have radio silence while I'm doing these, but um, they're just getting more different. I just interviewed someone over a full interview over Skype. I hope it comes out okay. The sound's going to be a little mushy until we can get back. I am looking for my next guests. So if you're interested and you have a story of inspiration to tell and you are from Wichita or live here or make some sort of art in some sort of way here, music, poetry, you paint, I don't care. I just love it, and I want everyone to know how cool Wichita is, and you're a part of that. So get me at catchapocket at gmail.com. You can see me on Instagram, Facebook. Um, I have a Twitter with like two followers. Um, I don't get on there very much. I'm posting all these on YouTube as well, so I'm getting some additional feedback from the YouTubes. And uh, if you guys have any other things you want to say, you know where to get me. I'm always here waiting for a good conversation, ready to catch a pocket with you. And I hope you guys catch a pocket you can be proud of.